Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for checking out the video. Welcome to Keeping It Real Fishing. You know, it's getting to be a bad time to be a bass. <laughs> Just in general. 2015, I think, is going to be a bad year. And I think going forward, they're going to be progressively worse. Reason being is because we have lures like the one we're looking at here tonight. Guys, uh, Jackal, Gantarell, uh, a supremely realistic looking lure. It, it's, I'm getting to the point that I almost feel bad. It's, it's almost unfair. Uh, this is a really, really nice offering uh, in a kind of mid to large size bluegill hard body swim bait. Uh, this is a brand new lure, and we're going to be taking it out, taking a close look at it, and talking about this, uh, this new offering from Jackal. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so uh, packaging wise, I brought this one over from Japan. I uh, was made aware of these, and I was really, really excited. Uh, because of a couple finishes that they offer, um, these photorealistic finishes really, you know, got me going. So I, I decided to uh, bite the bullet and pick one of these up. Now here's the thing: um, I just noticed on Tackle Torch just the other day after getting it, Jackal's bringing these over. Uh, 2015 Bassmaster Classic. This lure is going to be released, but this is going to be a U.S. offered lure. So while I can't understand all this, if you decide to pick up one of these. Uh, the back of your packaging should look uh, a little bit more familiar to your eyes. It should be all in English telling you about the features. But fear not, I was able to do my homework and I could tell you everything that you need to know about this lure prior to buying it. So let's uh, take it out here and take a look. Uh, we got some specs here. It's floating. The 160 millimeters, that translates to about 6.2 inches. The weight of 70 grams is 2.5 ounces. So uh, you can get away with probably a, a heavy uh, flipping stick, something like that. But um, at 2.5 ounces, you know you are looking at some some heavier gear. Don't test your medium heavy rods with this guy. It's probably not going to go too well for you. All right, let's take a look. I've already had this lure out, of course. I just put it in so you guys can see the packaging. It's really nice. It actually comes strapped down when you get it. There's like a zip tie holding it uh, really securely in place so you should have no problems with your paint uh, in transit or anything like that. Alright, here we go. So the big draw to this thing guys, of course, is the look of it, is the finish of it. Now uh, on Jackal's site, and I'll throw a link down there, there's three finishes which I think are going to really get you going because there's three that have kind of this photorealistic finish. This one is a, a lighter color and it's a matte finish and then there's two others which are a ghost finish. I think one's called a spawn gill and another one is called the ghost gill. This one um, again was brought over from Japan and the uh, seller that I bought it from referred to it as a pond gill and online I also see this designation here a RT gill so I think if we could translate this Japanese, that might say pond gill. But, uh, so pond or RT. And in addition to these photorealistic finishes, they also have uh, some more, I guess, just kind of traditional finishes. They don't actually mimic the fish skin or anything like that. Uh, they're a little bit more uh, basic. And some of them are very bright in color, uh, maybe for more of a reaction type approach. But this one here, <laughs> for sure, this, the ghost gill and the spawn gill is the one that almost certainly is going to be selling out everywhere just because it looks so damn realistic. Uh, so let me show you, that. just walk you around this bait for a second here, guys. Uh, first things first, you can see it in my hand. Again, 6.2 inches, nice size. You're definitely curtailing to a larger bite with this, but it's not so huge, right? You're not looking at an 8 or a 10 inch bait such that you're not going to get bit. I'm a Northeast fisherman. I fish New Jersey almost exclusively, and this is to me is kind of like a happy medium. Uh, I have the confidence knowing that I'm going to get the occasional small fish, which I'm not really looking for, but you know, just to break up the monotony of of swim bait fishing. But it's big enough such that you are definitely, definitely targeting uh, your your better sized bass with this guy. Going to cut down on a lot of those smaller strikes from the front. You can see those fins there, the prominent pectoral fins. I'll talk to you about those in just a second. From the top. From the 
the rear. And from the bottom, and the interesting thing on this one is, of course, it has this really bright orange stripe all across the bottom there. All right, so let's take a look at what's kind of unique on this or the hardware that it employs. These are Owner ST36 size 1 hooks, and of course you can see they're feather dressed. Um, really interesting, and what a lot of people are, are kind of talking about early on this is that you can see the line tie here uh, rotates. And um, on Jackal's site, they say that's to alleviate line twist during casting, which is typically the purpose of one of these rotating line ties. Okay, You also have another point here and I and I'm not sure that everybody knows what to do with it yet and myself included I hear people on forums saying that oh you could tie there as well um, and you know it's kinda of quizzical if that was a, a tie you think they would just give you another one of these on Jackal's site uh, as I poked around they're kind of saying that it's there to add actually a, if you wanted another hook in front or, or really anything they even say that you can kinda of add whatever you want um, you could put in, I guess, another feather up here. I mean, of course, you can tie your line, to, your line to that. It doesn't have to be a rotating one. It does give you some options, but I think, you know, of course, this is where you're supposed to be tied off. But, uh, you know, different. We have an option here to, you know, do whatever you want. Tie your line or put something else on. You see another one of those here towards the rear, embedded in the tail. I think a lot of people would probably be skeptical of putting a hook on there. Uh, they would wonder if this plastic here could handle the rigors of a really big bass thrashing around. Uh, if you are of that persuasion, I'm with you. Although, I mean, I would think if Jackal's putting it there that this has been tested to be pretty robust. But anyway, it's an option, right? You could use it or not use it. There's no detriment to having it there. Uh, of course, the tail is a hard plastic. I shouldn't really have to go into that. It's not rubber. It's a very, very hard plastic. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, same thing on the bottom. Pretty cool. You have rotating hook hangers on the bottom. And for anybody who might not be familiar, the advantage to these is that you have total freedom of movement. And so people will often kind of speculate that if you have a fixed hook hanger, there's the chance, depending on how the lure's moving in the fish's mouth or when the fish is thrashing, that sometimes the hook can turn to a certain point not be able to move any further and it might create a, a, a point of leverage potentially that the uh, fish could more easily uh, get the lure to pop or the uh, hook to pop out of its mouth you know most lures I don't know <laughs> the vast majority of lures don't have rotating hook hangers and uh, you know I don't really see that as a liability but definitely having it uh, there's no downside it does give that hook total freedom of movement and um, if that was a concern of yours at all then uh, you know this would alleviate it and not only on that front one but also on the back one this is a rotating hanger on the back so that's very very cool uh, looking again at that finish you can see if I hold it in the right light that the, the uh, mold itself the plastic mold has like a little scaling in it uh, which is kind of overwhelmed just by the sheer finish you don't generally see that when you're looking at it but it is in there uh, for anybody who's really a detail hound, if you want to kind of, you know, swim this and then dead stick it for a while, you know, little things like that you might think are important. Uh, you can see even interesting, like the screen printing here, you have this the translucent fin coming up along the side. It's just part of the paint, but it, it looks kind of cool in person. Eyes are well done. Uh, just everything about the bait is, is really well done. Uh, these are actually tinted. It's kind of nice. You can see the fins. they got some yellow tint going. There's some purple there. A little bit of purple on the bottom. I think that would look really nice in the water because you got to figure that the lure itself is opaque. Light's not going to pass through this, um, but light can pass through these and give it, uh, you know, just add a little bit of color to that dark silhouette if viewed from the side. All right, guys. So uh, let's move on and talk about these fins. The fins are, are pretty cool. Let me see if I can show you. The fins are actually slightly angled and this again is something that I read on Jackal's site. This isn't uh, you know my speculating. They're, they're mentioning that the angle of the fins here is ever so slightly kind of down. I'm exaggerating there with my finger just to show you what I mean. But they're not just straight. They're slightly angled down. And the idea there is that this is a floating lure but it's kind of like a heavy float. Uh, 
if you see a video of it in action, it doesn't stay high on the surface. It kind of sits just kind of with like the fin above. So it's kind of like a heavy float. And then if you keep your rod tip high and real slow, it has a very, very tight, very tight, it's not a wide serpentine action, it's a very tight uh, S action, swimming action. But if you reel down a little bit faster and drop your rod tip, the angle of this is intentional to get it to dive down. Uh, Jackal states uh, you can get it to go down a max of one meter. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. It gives you a couple options there in the water column. Fishing it as kind of a uh, top water slash kind of wake bait, and then bringing it down just under the surface. Uh, of course, as a kind of a dedicated shallow running swim bait. Now I wish I could show you guys the the swimming action, but my hands are tied. It's uh, January here in New Jersey. We got all kinds of snow outside. It's been you know highs of 20s and 30s. So uh, I'm not going to be able to do that, which is a little upsetting to me because that's kind of my, my MO now. I like to do in all my reviews is I like to show you a tabletop review. I want to show you all angles of it below water, and I want to show fish being caught on it. That's just my, uh, kind of my format now for my reviews. But I was really, really excited about this lure. It is coming out at the end of this month. Probably going to be a lot of talk about it with the Bassmaster Classic. So I figured a lot of people would like to just get a better look and just learn a little bit more about it and so hence we have uh, what I can show you here in the tabletop review. Alright, so sorry guys, no swimming action. The best swimming action that I could find is on Jackal's site. Uh, you'll see that link down below in the description and there's not a whole heck of a lot of it. So you can see that there, but I'll just mention briefly what you're getting into. It's, um, it's again a tight swimming action, but one of the cool things, and Jackal also states this on their site, is it has been engineered to do pretty easily a 180. So you can, you know, bring it along, and depending on how you twitch, you can almost get it to do some glide actions. You can get it to kick out to sides, and kick out to sides when you're, uh, you know, kind of twitch twitching it, and then let it go slack. It'll kind of, you know, swim out to the side that you last uh, had it going. And then, if you know how to induce a 180, you can do that, and you do see that uh, in this video below. The guy's bringing it along, he's got a kind of tight swimming action, and he gives it the right, uh, you know, kind of twitches, and then the bait turns right around and does a 180, which I know a lot of people like, and, um, you know, a lot of people feel that if you have a follower, <laughs> and this guy turns right around, that that can elicit uh, a strike from an otherwise uh, fish that, you know, might not bite. So that's very, very cool, is it's been purposefully engineered to do an easy 180 and uh, steer back at those fish. Very, very cool. All right, guys, so that's uh, pretty much it. We're just doing, again, that tabletop visual review. Hope you got a good look. And those are pretty much the features there. We got the hook hangers, the angle of the fins here, line tie options, really, really sweet finishes, and uh, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to show you one other section here. And uh, what I'd like to always do is compare it to other lures I have to give you, uh, beyond just the dimensions uh, of 6.2 inches, so you could actually see how this thing stacks up to some other lures that you might have. Alright guys, so for uh, other swim bait fishermen out there, I'm going to roll in a couple other popular lures here, give you a sense. This is the uh, Savage Gear 8 inch line through trout. And <clears throat> one that's, I think, palatable for a lot of other people is the 6-inch trout. As you can see, this uh, jackal gantrel there is substantially larger in profile. Not tremendously longer, but a whole lot more in the top-to-bottom dimension. Alright, so here it is against a Savage Gear 6-inch line-through trout. Okay, moving along. Another very popular lure a lot of people have. This is a, a River to Sea S Waver 168, almost dead on in terms of length, but this is a much more substantial lure. So you keep those things in mind depending on the kind of fish, the size of fish you're targeting. Viewed from the bottom, very similar if a fish was directly below. Uh, one I just reviewed, uh, some really cool options here, really nice. I love that there's a lot of bluegill styled swim baits coming out. I think that's a, 
a market that a lot of people were, were looking for options in as swim bait fishing becomes more and more popular. And here's kind of a one-two punch. This, this came out about a month or two ago, and now we have this. So I think these are going to be some very popular lures uh, this coming year in 2015. This is the Lucky Craft Real Bluegill. This is a nice combo too because this is a slow sink. This guy here runs at about uh, 5 feet. And here again you have kind of like that top water wake. You can get them to go down, uh, you know, a foot or two. Or I think they say up to 3, 3 feet maximum. So this is nice. Two different parts of the water column. And you have two really nice bluegill swim baits. Okay. And then for you guys who are, who are not into swim bait fishing, maybe you're just coming across this and this lure is piquing your interest. Maybe you want to pick up your first one. I figured I'd just throw it up against some more traditional size lures here. Here's a um, Striking 2.5. Right, so of course it's going to be a lot bigger, but just so you can get a sense of you know how much bigger a lure like this is, 6.2 inches. I know they're totally different classes of lures, but you know for those of you who are hearing about this swim bait thing and you just want to get a sense of how this is going to stack up to some of your existing gear, there's a 2.5, which a lot of people consider to be a you know pretty substantial uh, square bill. And then last one, guys, is step it down. I think you're looking for a different class of fish. <laughs> Here's a little bluegill. This is a striking 1.5. Both bluegills, but I definitely think that when you get that strike, you're going to be looking at two different categories of fish between who hits this and who hits this. All right, guys. So there's a comparison. Really, really awesome lure, and um, just so excited to get it out. But all my legs are frozen. Wish I could show you that underwater footage. May do a full review of this uh, come spring. Definitely going to be throwing it. Uh, might come back at you with a full on the water and underwater and all that kind of stuff review. We'll have to see. But I just wanted to show it to you guys now to give you a heads up on this uh, really, really cool bluegill swim bait. Alright everybody, thanks for watching. And If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments.